Hey everybody, today I'd like to talk about uh, performance and uh, more specifically how to improve the performance of your GraphQL requests inside your Vulkan apps. So one of the really cool things about GraphQL, as you well know, is that you can specify uh, the data you want and you can do that uh, using a kind of a graph format where you you know, go from node to node and dig deep into your schema and get uh, all the data you need. So this is great because you can, uh, let's say, here we have um, a project I'm working on. So there's rooms and you can imagine these rooms would have uh, data attached and uh, other documents uh, reference using resolvers. And you can do a ton of cool stuff, but the problem is that it can lead to very slow requests. So let me show you what I mean exactly. So here I'm going to load up um, the bookings for uh, the site and it loads really fast because it's actually cached. So that's my mistake. Let's reload the whole thing and then we'll have a fresh request. And then I'm going to uh, bring up my network tab. That's going to be very useful. Type in GraphQL here so we can filter the requests. And now let's give it a try. So as you can see, uh, it's pretty slow, right? So five seconds. I mean, it's not the end of the world, uh, but it's not great. Now, I should mention that um, here, as you can see, I'm developing locally, but I'm not using my local database. If you use your local database, uh, you probably won't notice any delay because uh, any operation is pretty much instantaneous. So instead, there's a little trick you can do which is uh, instead of just running meteor uh, start or whatever it is, meteor settings, uh, you just add this before the meteor command. So the full command will be something like meteor uh, right. So mongo URL and then meteor settings, settings JSON. If you do that, it will tell meteor, meteor to run using this database URL and you can simulate, you can actually use your production or staging database locally on your own local machine and this way uh, replicate the slow load times for your database. So that's a good tip to know about. So this is what I'm doing here. This is why it's taking so long. And to see exactly what's going on, well, first we're going to figure out what the name of that uh, GraphQL operation is and it's bookings list query. Um, let's actually copy this and look at it here. Uh, you can see that um, the fragment used bookings item fragment. First of all, it has a lot of fields, but more than that, it has a lot of uh, subfields. So here it's also loading uh, charges, user room. And as you can imagine, those all lead to their own uh, separate database requests on separate Mongo collections, so charges, users, and rooms. So this is what's slowing everything down. And a very good way to visualize this is using uh, Apollo Engine. So Apollo Engine is a new service by the Apollo people. It gives you tons of analytics about your GraphQL API. And what we want to do here is, uh, first of all, find uh, our query in the list of operations here. So bookings list query. And then, so already we can see we have some data here, uh, request rate. So that's not super useful because, you know, so far I'm, I'm the only one using the app. So obviously there's not going to be a ton of requests, uh, service time, service requests already. That's kind of uh, more meaningful. You can see, uh, some really slow times here. But mostly what we want to see is uh, the traces screen. So uh, something I just noticed, we have all these traces. We want to be sure we pick the most recent one, right? Because uh, that gives us the most up-to-date information. And when we do that, we can see the whole trace of our GraphQL operation. Now, uh, these are not like 
it's shown like this it's shown uh, in a wa waterfall uh, sequential view so this doesn't mean that these are nested uh, these are like just the successive bookings so basically first booking takes you know this much time second one this much time and, and it, it all adds up right ideally like one booking should take a couple milliseconds so that the whole request takes like you know less than a second but here since every booking takes you know one or two seconds it all adds up to a 10 second long waiting time for the user so that's that's not good um, if we drill down here we can see as expected these fields uh, come back really quickly because they're all part of a single initial uh, Mongo query but then um, you know let's say room uh, that's also fairly fast so I, I don't know it seems like amount per night and amount per month take a long time I don't know if I can trust this a hundred percent well it probably depends on the actual code that's running right um, let, let's see if there's any database called in in this I don't think so but I might be wrong so uh, I'm gonna go to my booking schema oh and actually there is one okay my bad so amount per night um, what we want to know here is for a given booking how much is, is it gonna cost per night and uh, to know that well we want to query for the room uh, matching the booking and then find that rooms nightly rate by the way uh, we're building here a, a, an Airbnb type rental site so that's what's going on here and of course we do have this uh, mongo operation which is going to be repeated for every um every single booking in our list so yeah i guess uh, i guess engine was right these these two guys do have database operations so it makes sense that they're gonna take some time to return and this one here you can see it's pretty similar so well what can we do about that uh there's a couple strategies we could use uh, first we could um, well denormalize that information because this is after all MongoDB right so instead of relying on GraphQL to figure out the amount per night for a given booking we could just um, store it on the booking document itself in the database now let's think about this for a second um, once someone has created a booking, the amount is not going to change, right? Even if uh, the room's own amount changes, the room's price changes, the booking won't because you don't want to like start charging more um, for a user without their knowledge. So that's probably pretty fixed. So it does make sense that we would set this um, using basically a Mongo operation and denorm denormalize it on the document so that's one option probably the best probably what we're gonna do but okay let's keep thinking what else can we do um, we could use data loader so what's data loader well it's a uh, it's a library by Facebook <coughs> sorry that helps you uh, avoid fetching the same documents multiple times okay so I've just implemented data loader as you can see it's super simple basically I just replace my find one call by a loader.load call uh, it's explained in the documentation right here data loading caching and batching you have two options either load a single document or load many documents now let's see if there's any improvements bookings here as you can see it's already much much faster so uh, we had loading times of like five six even ten seconds and now it's 1.4 second and if we look at the trace here um, so I, I took a screenshot of the slow trace right uh, and it was amount per night and amount per month 
which were really slow. And now let's look at them, amount per night, amount per month, both super fast. Why? Because uh, Data Loader is now loading the, the room data from its cache and not from, from the database. So we did make our request a ton faster. And, um, you know, you kind of want to search every instance of find one or find uh, in your resolvers. Uh, that might be another place here. And uh, think about whether you can replace them with uh, data loader or not. So let's see if there's uh, other examples that we can improve. So I'm now looking at another slow request, which is um, my user admin dashboard. Again, as you can see, it's really slow, uh, around six seconds. And the reason it's slow, uh, you can probably figure it out pretty quickly. As you can see, every user here has uh, a list of rooms, bookings, and reviews. And some of these users may have a lot of rooms. Some of them may have a lot of uh, bookings. Even if they don't, that's uh, added database requests every time. Now, um, the reason this is not as easy to solve as before is because if we look at our database requests here, we are requesting uh, multiple rooms, right? Not just a single room by ID, but multiple rooms. And we are not requesting them by ID, but instead we want to see all the rooms uh, that correspond to a given user ID. So we cannot use data loader for that. So um, what else can we do if we don't want to, you know, hack data loader for now? Well, we can go back and look at our trace and see what's going on here. So um, one thing I noticed right away is that, so as expected, um, user nine takes the most time and that's because user nine is the one with all those rooms. Yeah, this one current user can review. This is um, something I did to check if a user can review a room or not based on a couple of factors. And um, well, as you can see, it has two database calls. So that, that's gonna be a, a bad, bad sign for us right away. But one easy thing we can do is just stop requesting the field, right? So I realized that that field was included in my rooms item fragment right here. And I was just reusing that for my admin dashboard as well. But I don't actually need that field here. So I can just, you know, replace rooms item fragment by by this and already it should uh, improve things. So um, I'm going to go ahead, reload, trigger another request. Well, as you can see, it's not that fast, even without that fragment, still six seconds. And at this point, it's it's hard to know exactly, you know, what to do because uh, no matter what, it, you know, it's still gonna need to query for these uh, these rooms and stuff. So this might be um, a chance to use caching, but I haven't looked into caching at all yet. So I'll probably leave this for another video. Uh, to keep things relatively short here. So just to um, to recap, well, there's basically two things to, to remember from this video. One, um, when something is slow, it can be due to a bunch of reasons. Well, it's always almost always because you're hitting the database when you shouldn't, but there's all kinds of ways to hit the database. You might be querying for a single document, in which case uh, data loader works great or you might be doing some more complex Mongo queries, in which case data loader uh, doesn't really work. And so, yeah, the first thing is it's really important to know, um, to understand when to use which optimization. And then the second thing is, uh, even with all these uh, techniques, you'll hit some limits, things that you just can't optimize easily. So. Um,
stay tuned for more uh, performance improvements, hopefully in the near future. And in the meantime, let me know if the data loader uh, denormalization and indexes patterns help you out. Thanks for watching.